Welcome everyone to Division C's evaluation contest. My name is Crystal Pugh and I am your Zoom master today. I am joined by our contest chair, Debbie Berger, as well as our Toastmaster, Lyle Schellenberg. So give them a round of applause, yay. We are gonna go over a few house rules today. And then I'm gonna hand this over to our Toastmaster who is going to rock this as he always does. So house rules, which are awesome. I get to be your bouncer for today. Please turn off your video and mute yourself if you are not speaking. That is not only gonna help with the bandwidth, but it is also courteous to those who are helping and speaking unless you are our timer or <laughs> which is summer. Please do not use a virtual background when speaking. I promise it does not help. It can be a little messy at times. And as you can see, it's a little glitchy. And so it does not make for a fun time when that is going on. This video is being recorded, will be available later for use. Also, your speaking area is the area of whoever has the smallest cord. And then my other suggestion is if you wear glasses, like Todd, who has a little bit of a glare on them, it is actually really distracting when your, audio, when your video is coming up on there. So I highly suggest that if you wear glasses that have a glare to take them off or change out your glasses so that way you can ensure that everyone has a very positive experience. I am going to then hand this over to our Toastmaster who can take over and as well as announce the speaking order. So with that, Toastmaster Lyle Schellenberg. Well, welcome fellow Toastmasters and guests if we have any. My name is Lyle Schellenberg. I am the Toastmaster for today's Zoom contest. I want to thank you for joining this amazing experience. And I had on my script to say, please take out your cell phones and turn them off. But I don't think it's necessary because our Zoom master, Crystal Pugh, will be muting and unmuting everyone. Our speaking order, I think that's one of the first thing everybody wants to know is our first speaker, or our first contestant will be Jonathan Booth. And our second one will be James Wants. So there's our speaking order. And uh, now I would like to uh, uh, mention that in a contest we have assigned judges and we're scoring against a matrix worksheet. Michelle Lavalin will be acting as chief judge. And Michelle, all, are all the contests Contestants in good standing order and eligible into, to complete, uh, compete, and are they briefed? Yes, yes, Mr. Toastmaster. Okay, well, let's move on. Evaluations are two to three minutes. They will be disqualified at less than one minute, 30 seconds, or more than three minutes, 30 seconds. The green light will come on at two minutes, yellow at two minutes, 30 seconds, and the red light will come on in three and remain on. I'm not real sure, maybe Michelle could fill us in on how the ballots and timing records, how they're being returned to you, just so everybody knows. Well, the judges are aware of that, the ballot counters are aware of that, and um, we are good. Thank you. Okay. Now the evaluation contestants will all be responding to the same speech and then they'll be sequestered into their little holding room until it's their turn. They'll have five minutes to prepare under the supervision of the Sergeant of Arms and uh, then we'll move on. So I think we're ready to move on. I'd like to, very pleased to announce that Todd Lamentz has graciously agreed to serve in the role of speaker for the evaluations. Lyle, real quick, can we have Summer show how she is doing her timing for everyone? Oh, sure. Oh, very nice. Green. Yep. 
Also, one other thing I would recommend for our contestants is that when they are speaking, make sure that you paint, pin Summer as your video. So that way you are looking at her versus looking at everyone else on screen. So that would be my only other suggestion for the day. And I apologize that I forgot that in my slides. Okay, thank you. Are we ready to go? Please join me in welcoming Todd Laments. The title of his speech is, I just wanted the other kids to like me. I just wanted the other kids to like me, Todd Laments. I really just wanted the other kids to like me. I really truly needed their approval. But for the early years of my life, I was bullied mercilessly. I, the, the bullying started, and as I changed schools, I thought, being the optimistic that a person that I am, I thought as I changed schools, the bullies would go away. But as I got bigger and changed schools, the bully got bigger and changed names. One day on the playground, I was cornered by the biggest, meanest bully of them all. His name was Michael Jeffers. And he was teasing me and teasing me, and everyone in the playground was watching. And finally, I couldn't take any more, and I took my fist, and I hit him as hard as I could in the face. He was shocked that I hit him. And before he knew we were in a fight, I hit him about seven more times. Now the assistant principal, Mr. Green, clenched teeth, red-faced, ran and grabbed me by the shoulders, and he dragged me in these days, it was in the 80s, to his personal car, and he was driving me home. And I was, as I, we were driving, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'm gonna be in so much trouble from my mother. But he drove right past my house, and I thought, oh no, he's taking me to jail. He, he didn't take me to jail. He took me to the Boys and Girls Club. He went inside and leaning on the ring was a 50 year old, whip thin, chiseled, gray bearded, African American name, man named Kevin Morgan. And, it was, and Kevin Morgan used to be the WBC champion of the world. Mr. Green pointed at the ring and said, Todd, from now on, any fighting you're gonna do is gonna be in here. Now, my first boxing trainer, believe it or not, was the welterweight champion of the world, Kevin Morgan. He took one look at me and says, you need to get in shape, you're fat. And I was horrified. I thought I was in pretty good shape. Back then we didn't call it hat fat, we called it husky. So he said, you're gonna be running five miles every day, you're gonna be training every day. And I said, is this so I can win? He says, no, this is just so you can compete. So after training, I got myself in shape and it was six months later and I had my first fight. Now everyone knows here how nervous you get for a, for a speech, right? How nervous you get that pounding? Well, imagine you invite all your friends and family and you're fighting the toughest kid your size from another town. You get so nervous, it's so counterintuitive. You feel like you should run out of, run off the, out of the ring. So I invited everyone to my first fight and 30 seconds in, it was like jumping in a pool with sharks. You know it's a bad idea right away. And I was, I was outclassed, I was exhausted. And this kid was stronger, faster than me. After the fight, everybody was ashamed of me. My, fa my own family and friends all came. They kind of couldn't make eye contact with me. And Kevin especially was very disappointed. We went back to training and I wasn't really getting any better. I'd go every day and I'd do everything that was told. And, and Kevin, I went to two more fights and I lost both of those. And, and Kevin, being an ex-world champion, very competitive, he said, I can't train you anymore if you keep losing. You have to get better or you have to stop boxing. He said, the only reason I stayed training with you is because you have such a great attitude. So taking his advice, he came in one day frustrated. He said, we're going to switch you up. You fight right-handed now, we're going to switch you to left-handed. This is your last chance. He says, if this works, and what that means is my power hand was out front, and the, the results were instant, and I started winning. I started beating up the, the other kids in sparring. And then I started going to matches, and I didn't just win. I dominated every round. I was knocking the other kids out. 
And I started to get all this approval, all this attention from my at school, my peers, my family. And I loved it. I started traveling around New England and I started to win all my contests. I even got my name in the paper, which in the 80s was a big deal, pre-internet. Now, Kevin started to show some weird behaviors. He grabbed his wife and he slammed her up against the door and he ended up in jail for a couple months. He also grabbed his granddaughter's arm and, and he also ended up in jail for a couple months. And after he got out of jail, he was at his mother's house and he started to kind of repeat himself a lot. He, he got into some fights at the gym and he wouldn't show up and he got to be swearing a little bit abusive with me. And, and I didn't think anything of it at the time because he's a boxing coach, you know, he's a tough guy, but I went and visited him at his mom's house and, and she had tears running down her face and, and Kevin, Kevin couldn't talk anymore. And he had uh, dementia. He had brain damage from all his years of boxing. And it was real hard to see him like that. So I, I talked to his mom and I said, well, you know, Kevin's so fit. He's so strong. And at this point, his wife had left him. His family had disowned him from all the abuse. All his money was gone from his years of boxing on bad investments and kind of a party lifestyle. And I said to his, his mom, I said, well, let's get him to Europe or, you know, there's about to be some doctors somewhere that can help him. And his mom said to me in a very sobering voice, Todd, he's just been hit in the head too many times. And if you keep boxing, this is what's going to happen to you. So I thought about it, and that was the last day I boxed. And back in the days when I was a little kid, and a lot of the, the, the years of my life when I was little, I just really needed the approval of the other kids. Now, I know if I would have continued boxing, I would have ended it up not being able to talk in complete sentences, just like Kevin. Now I get that approval somewhere else. I get it here at Toastmasters from you guys. And I'm so glad it turned out that way. Mr. Toastmaster. Can't hear you, Lyle. Hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, Sergeant at Arms or Crystal, please sequester the uh, evaluators, allow them to prepare for five minutes. Madam Timer, keep track of the five minutes, please, and let us know when it's up. Mr. Toastmaster, they have been asked to go to their specific rooms. Great. So now you get to entertain us for the next five minutes. You could even do some table topics if you wish. Table topics, table topics. Okay. Well, who's here? Um, You've got a, a timer. You've got a Zoom master. You've got Todd. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna start. Uh, Todd, you mentioned that you're from the East Coast. So tell us about how you got to the West Coast. I lived in Portland. I've lived in Portland, Maine, and Portland, Oregon. So my mother got a job with a, check, with, with a business. You want to talk about failing businesses. She worked for the biggest check printing company in, in the world. But as we all know, there's less demand for check printing now. So she got promoted to run a plant out here in Portland, Oregon. And they are since defunct. Crystal, you also moved to Oregon. Tell us where you moved from. Where haven't I lived in this great country of ours? I am originally from the San Luis Obispo area of California. I immediately moved out to Denver, Colorado once I graduated high school. Spent about two and a half years the first time I moved to Denver. Moved to Virginia for six months. Hated the 
East Coast, and then I moved out to uh, other places. And so I really um, just enjoyed that as well. I've been to Pennsylvania. I've been Oregon. I, I've been all over the place. But I am going to actually let you interview Todd for a few more moments just so that you can have fun getting to know, so we can get to know Todd better. Okay. Well, Todd, what, what else do you, can you tell us? Uh, tell us about your family. Um, I'm not that close to my family. I, I have, um, I don't know if this is, my, yeah, that's probably not it. Do you have another question? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably, not, that's a very complicated one. Okay. <laughs> that's harder okay. than table topics. Okay, yeah. <laughs> If you have a pet or you'd like to get a pet, what would it be? I'll tell you what. I had a cat named Sarah, and she was the sweetest, smartest thing. And I always hate when I'm a huge cat lover, and I'm an all my whole family is all animals. That's what I, one thing I will tell you about our family. We're not perfect, but we love animals. And the rougher they are, the rougher we are around the edges, the more we love animals. And this cat, I had her. I had her for 18 years. I had her from when she was a kitten. And I saw, I fed her every day for 18. When she passed away, I was traumatized. And I, I thought I could handle it. I was in the army and I, I didn't, it was horrible. I was, I, and the thing I miss most, Lyle, was feeding her every day. Just that, that's every day her getting up crying and me feeding her. I wouldn't, you wouldn't think you'd miss the chores part of it. And so I think about that with relationships. They're not just about the highs or the lows. They're about the little days, the steady things. Great. Yeah, my kids had a, uh, they had a dog, uh, Maggie Sue. She was a real nice uh, dog. I don't know, she's some kind of a mix, but she, she was a nice dog. Uh, but I was background construction. I worked multiple states and quite often I didn't always get home for dinner on time. And my wife had a habit of feeding my dinner to the dog. <laughs> and Maggie got a little on the heavy side. Uh, you know, she could make it maybe two doors down before the sidewalk. She'd just take, take her for a walk. She'd just sit down. So that's far enough. Uh, but, <laughs> Lazy. Uh, yeah. My, I, I don't friend, think it was the best way to treat her, but uh, I think, uh, but she was a nice dog and that, and uh, she was a great pet and uh, she really, really loving and friendly. And uh, she's a good dog. I kind of miss her a little bit. I had a friend who's a, a professional speaker, and he's very health conscious. And he said, have you ever noticed that we won't feed certain food to, to dogs saying it's bad for, for them, but then we eat it? And I always like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's our five minutes. So, Bristol, can you bring our first – let's start with uh, – Yep, there. Uh, Oops, hold on. Wait, uh, stop it. Bring Jonathan back. Yeah, hold on a second. I messed up. Hold on. And I can't stop this. Oh, the pleasures of. Hold on a second. It's going to take about. Let's see if I can. Yeah, it's not going to let me fix it. Give me a second here and I will move some people back. So let's not start this up. It's going to take another 30 seconds. Come on, timer. Oh, the joys of technology. I will say this is my first time being a Zoom master. So as Toastmasters, we all know we have to make mistakes before we can at least somewhat perfect our craft and our abilities to be better. And I'm really trying to kill the next five seconds because as you know, when we do table topics, we always have to be mindful of that. So I'm gonna move Give me a second, exchange, oh, no, hold on. Crystal? Yes. I, um, it, it should only be Jonathan coming into the main session right now. Yes, I realized that and so I am trying to... Uh, judges, please disregard the call to break out room. Please disregard. Um, do, 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 do. 
Okay, let me do this. Uh, Crystal, we should be, go? yeah, we should be good to go now. Okay, I'm going to go back to the, the breakout room. Yes, please. And I do apologize about that, folks. Okay. Our first evaluator this morning is Jonathan Booth. Jonathan Booth. Can you unmute him, please? Mr. Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters and honoured guests, if we have any in this strange environment that we find ourselves, Mr. Laments, or may I call you Todd, um, I found this to be a gripping speech and I loved the way that you constructed it. We had no idea where it was going, but you drew us in to this speech with a powerful story. One statement, and then you were into narrative. I loved the way that you used your hands. It was the best that you could do in terms of body movement, which in this environment is a bit like an oxymoron. The first and last sentence of your speech was well uh, constructed. And we kind of had a roadmap to take us through because we knew that this speech was centered on bullying. At least that's what I thought. It started with bullying and then it led into a speech that was more about a rite of passage, more about a boy growing up and becoming a man, but giving us a real deep insight into what was going on and who it was that surrounded you. Positive influences like Mr. Green, who was a brilliant teacher and you remember him by name. Kevin, who taught you things even though his own life took a downward spiral and he could have taken you with it, but you didn't. Uh, on some of the things that we know to be important in any speech, the speech was clear. You had vocal variety. We loved the fact that you did make eye contact with us the whole time, even though you had to perform this speech in a very unusual way. We saw the gr gestures. I loved the heart movement that was there. Uh, audience awareness, I marked down in my theoretical evaluator's uh, form uh, as not applicable because you couldn't get coming back to you what you would normally come back to you as well. You were comfort and, uh, uh, and at ease with what was going on. You held our interest uh, throughout. And of course, the talk was well supported because it was your story. What could you have improved on? What could you have done different? I think I would have focused a little bit more on the end of the story. You gave us the one line about being a Toastmaster and the difference that that made. I would have liked to have heard more. The only thing I can say to you in closing is the highest compliment I can pay you is I'd love to hear that speech again, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Jonathan. Will our timer please give us a minute so the judges can uh, finish their scoring? And it just so happens that it's exactly one minute till they come in.
Okay, thank you, Timer. Our next evaluator will be James Wants. James Wants. At the very basic core, communication and public speaking is all about getting your message across. And in these days, when we have the Zoom platform taking over for an in-person meeting, the platform itself becomes vital in assisting or inhibiting the speaker from being able to get their message across. Todd gave us a wonderful presentation that was a story within a story, a cautionary tale, and a complete and wonderful presentation of a period of his life. I'd like to talk about a couple of ways that we can take the presentation that he gave us and make it even better, especially on the Zoom platform. The first and foremost thing that I'd like to point out to all speakers is that it is imperative to be able to look right into the camera so that the other people in the meeting have a sense of being able to see you. Now, this can be difficult, especially if you wear glasses. Because oftentimes, these glasses do provide a reflection that bounces off of the lens. Now, Todd didn't necessarily have that problem, but I do, because now everybody has turned into a blur. But if you're looking directly at that particular camera, you are making eye contact with your audience. Now, one of the things that I really love that Todd did was that he had excellent audio. We could hear his audio. He had a speaker, a microphone that was right in front of his voice, right in front of the mouth to pick up absolutely everything. And I've discovered with video and especially Zoom that it's absolutely imperative to enhance the highs and deepen the lows because on video, your voice gets flattened. And if your voice gets flattened, your message gets flattened. So here's a bit of advice for Todd to make sure to punch those highs, to get really excited and talk about the day that he was in the ring, and then to pull back and maybe get a bit more cautionary as he talks about Kevin's problems with abuse and the time that he had to spend in jail. It's imperative to insert more emphasis, more dynamicism, and more interest to a presentation that is taking place over video. Because oftentimes, your viewer is watching you on a device of this small. And that is why I appreciated when Todd stayed right in the frame. He didn't try and get up and move away from it and move about the room as a regular speaker would. Because this is our new normal. And this is how we maintain communication with our audiences. And we have to adapt our public speaking style to make sure our message gets across. Todd, thank you very much for your presentation today. I hope that I have provided you with some possible solutions for how to make it even better. Madam Contest Chair, or Mr. Contest Chair. Thank you. Okay, uh, timer, I guess we need a little time here for another minute for the judges to finish voting. Thank you, timer. Okay, I'm sure the, ti the timers and ballot counters need a little more time. So during this time, I'd like to interview our 
contestants. So excuse could me, I have- Excuse me, excuse me, this is the yes, chief sir. judge. Please don't start yet, we are not all done. It oh. is a limited time. Okay. Thank you. I know it feels longer than it does in a physical contest, but this is a new skill we also need to practice. When they're finished, hold the ballot up. <laughs> yeah, I will Sigda, I will inform you with once I know that all the judges have finished. And judges, take your time, no pressure. Okay, Mr. Contest Toastmaster, you can have fun now. Thank you so much for your patience. Can't hear you, Lyle. You hear me now? <laughs> yes. Okay. Jonathan, in your bio, you say you like wine and you like travel. Tell us about the type of wine you like to drink and where you like to travel to drink your wine. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. I'm interested that our contest chair describes this uh, as a lot of fun. <laughs> and I'll try and make it some fun. But uh, I, so I moved from uh, England uh, to Oregon. Uh, now, one thing you should know about England is that it has no ability when it comes to food and wine, or little ability at all. So I got landed in wine country with 500 or so wineries, and now I live in McMinnville, which is even closer to the heart of uh, the northern part of Oregon wine country, and I'm surrounded by wineries. So in answer to your question, uh, yes, I love a good Pinot, uh, who doesn't, but but also I just like the variety and the way that uh, these wines are crafted here uh, and uh, they stick the nose up to the French because we Brits were always against the French. Um, and in terms of travel, um, I, I've had the privilege of working in 50 countries. I, I had a global uh, job before I uh, came here. Uh, and so that took me to lots of places. And I used to build into all my trips to different territories two or three days after 
uh, a trip to give me an opportunity to see around and see what was there. So I remember being in Cape Town and traveling out th uh, around the Cape to Hermanus, where is the largest colony of white sharks anywhere in the world. And being able to cage dive with great whites was just the most awesome experience. It must be 25 years ago now, and I remember it as if it was yesterday. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. James, it says that you are a professional cat wrangler. So can you tell us about that? <laughs> well, much as Jonathan moved to England to the center of wine country, I live in the center of cat country. I am surrounded by cats. In fact, there are three cats that I live with right now. The former house that I was at, there were outdoor cats that I was taking care of. At one point, I had 12 cats showing up for all three meals. Now, I didn't give them wine or crackers, but they did get some pretty fancy foods at certain points. And I realized that if I didn't want to have 150 cats next year, that I should probably catch a few of them and get them and or spayed or neutered. That began my career as a cat wrangler. So although I haven't swum with white sharks, I have had the distinct pleasure of capturing on three or four different occasions now, 15 cats each and storing them in my utility shed overnight so that they can go in and get surgically altered, then bringing them back, storing them that night, feeding them dinner and letting them out in the morning. I think I'd rather swim with sharks then deal with cats that are stuck in cages that don't like being stuck in cages because they're used to being outside. And now it turns out that we have a bunch of stray cats that have showed up at work. My coworkers are beginning to think that I am the Pied Piper of cats and that I am bringing them along. So I have my work cut out for me. Thank you, James. Now, I'm not sure who's gonna announce the winners. I suppose that will be Chief Judge Michelle. I don't know if we have, <clears throat> Michelle's in another oh. area right now. Okay. Well, maybe we don't know yet. Who we possibly is. don't know yet. So that is something we can anticipate and wait and see what, the results are going to be. Ah, they just left for, one just left for their room. Oh, the suspense. Well, let's, let's ask you a question, Mr. Toastmaster, since you've been turning it on us. Okay. Well, we want to know who are you, what club you represent, and why you chose Toastmasters as an organization to join. Well, I belong to two clubs. I belong to Bootstrappers, and we meet online on Zoom. And I belong to uh, Toasting Excellence, and we also meet online on Zoom. Zoom seems to be the place everybody's meeting these days. I joined Toastmasters. I had, had quite an experience doing public speaking, but I never felt I was very good. And I wanted to improve my public speaking. And I thought, since I retired, I had more time to focus on public speaking. Although I've already given my most impressive speeches, I've testified in front of Congress a couple occasions. I've given speeches in front of thousands of people and always survived somehow. But I just never felt very comfortable and I wanted to improve my skill because you never know when you're going to have to give another speech. Back to you, Ab Crystal. Absolutely, Lyle. Thank you so much. I will revert the question back to myself and I will even put my camera on so that everyone can see me. 
Like I said, my name's Crystal Pugh. I am in two clubs. I am with Division B. I am a member of Gateway Toastmasters. We meet on Zoom, as everyone is nowadays, at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights. And I am also trying to finish starting up a club, which is called North Eugene Toastmasters. We meet Tuesday mornings at 7 a.m. and we are this close to chartering, which is amazing. But the thing that brought me to Toastmasters was actually the urging of my soul and my heart to want to get out of the house. When I joined Toastmasters almost six years ago, I was a stay-at-home mom trying to run a business from home and was also taking care of four kids. And I needed to get out of the house and have some adult interaction. And so it was really beneficial for me to be invited by a blogger that I watched and really just enjoyed going in there. And so the first meeting I have, I walk in there and I hear these two guys start telling a joke and to break the ice and to fit in a little bit, I said, that's what she said, because I was a girl walking into the room and both of them just looked at me and I broke the ice that way and was with Harrisburg Young Professionals Toastmasters until my move after to Oregon. But I was questioned about my really cool headset and how amazing it is. It's from a company called, I believe it's Turtle Beach. Yeah, Turtle Beach. And what's really, I believe I got this headset either at Costco or at Walmart, I believe is what it was, but I'm leaning towards Costco. And what's really neat about this headset is it actually has foam around the ears for glasses so that it does not make my headset feel heavy or hurt my ears. And then it has a really great mic that goes right to my face. And what's also neat is when I want to mute my mic, I flip it around and it then mutes the system. Oh, hi, kitty. I have four cats myself. And so I completely understand, James, where you are coming from being a cat wrangler. I get woken up at six o'clock every morning for feedings. And it is therapeutic and amazing because when they come up to you and they're all just wanting pets and loves, it's the greatest feeling in the world that you are bonded to your cats that way. So that and they're is- just like white sharks when oh, they're yes. hungry. Oh, yes. And in fact, I'm looking at two of them right now sleeping on top of their cat tree that we just got recently. A third is under my feet sleeping, and I don't know where the fourth one is. It's probably around here somewhere. So I have a question. I don't know what club Jonathan is representing. Oh. And I don't well, believe I, we were asked about our clubs no. or areas, and that's kind of information I, I'm interested in. Yes, uh, we'll start with you, James, since you're on the mic first. Tell us what clubs you represent and what brought you to Toastmasters. Well, right now I am representing the prison club, Capital Toastmasters. They were able to have somebody from the outside represent them at the, uh, well, you know, the 12th Division Contest. That's where we are. <laughs> the area contest a while ago. I wasn't quite sure about that. And what brought me to Toastmasters is I actually started in Toastmasters while I was serving time in prison. That's why I have a passion for going back and being a volunteer in the prison club. And now I'm able to represent them on the outside. It was an opportunity to become better at communicating and at being around a lot of, well, sharks on the inside many people in there need better communication skills. So I am continually recommending Toastmasters to everybody that I meet, and I am pleased that I am able to represent the club on the inside that many of my friends are still a member of. Well, thanks for sharing that, James. Is anybody interested in wanting to know who the winners are? I want to hear what Club Jonathan's representing. 
want to hear about. Oh, Trump. yeah, Jonathan, who are you representing? So I represent um, McMinnville uh, Toastmasters uh, here in the little beautiful town of McMinnville. Um, and that's a club that grew out of a company, Evergreen, Evergreen Aviation, uh, as you may well know. And it's been around for about 40 years and there's some very loyal members. It's a small club, but I've loved uh, attending here. Okay, thank you. Now, who's going who's gonna to hand out the certificate? Is that you, Debbie? Hi, I will be giving those later <laughs> right now. <laughs> I, I have the trophies here, actually, and I'll mail them to whoever is the winner. Hold them up, hold them up, we want to oh, see you. Uh, okay, host. hold on, let me get them, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. okay. Hopefully Debbie didn't have to go to her car or something to get those. <laughs> yeah, actually we created for another contest, we had uh, certificates and then you put them on PowerPoint. So when you call the winner, what actually comes up on the screen are the certificates. So you have it for, you know, recording and all that. Yeah, that sounds like a good way to do it. Mr. Toastmaster, just while we're waiting, um, I, I just wanted to say, I said to James privately, I'd love to have him as an evaluator uh, of one of my speeches. And, and I do think in the context of this evaluation um, contest, it, it's just so good to hear other people and um, I had the, the, you know, I just happened to draw first, so I got to hear uh, James's evaluation. But I, I, I do think that that really helps. I say to people about Toastmasters a couple of things. I've been speaking all my life, uh, and I didn't start Toastmasters till I was about 55 years old. And I wish I'd gone much, much sooner. But I say to people, if you want to really get a lot out of Toastmasters, look for sharp evaluators. And fortunately for me, I went to Human Services as the first Toastmasters club I went to in, um, in Salem uh, when I first got here in 2010. And uh, I had some really sharp evaluators in that room and it was just so helpful. Well, good, thanks for sharing that. Okay, are we ready now? Do we have a drum roll or anything? Okay. Kyle? Yes. Hi, sorry to interrupt. Do you want me to show the trophies? Yes, yeah, show, show second place. Well, we don't have the names attached to these yet, but I just want to show what the trophies look like. Yep. So this is the second place trophy for the evaluation contest. And the first place trophy is the same, but it's just a little bit bigger. You can see in relation <laughs> to my face, how big it is. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. I'm excited to hear the results. Okay, in second place, we have Jonathan Booth. First place, we have James Wants. So congratulations, guys. Great job. Now, I do want to thank uh, Todd Laments for being our model speaker today. It's always good to have a great model speaker. And I want to thank contestants, judges, ballot counters, timers, uh, our Zoom uh, master. I, uh, I miss anybody, uh, our chief judge, because that's how what makes our club or our contest a success. And yeah, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of people to put on a Zoom uh, contest. 
And uh, I think we did quite well. We did get to the final thing. We did get to a result. So that's the most important thing. Now I would like to return control to our Division C director, Debbie Berger. Hey, thank you everyone. Thank you, Lyle. Great job as Toastmaster today. I so much appreciate all of you for the efforts that you put in. And this is a very interesting environment to have a contest. This is my very first Zoom contest. So I, I thought we did very well. We landed the plane, we got the results in. <laughs> and so the trophies will be mailed to you. If you wouldn't mind leaving your address in the chat so that I can send all of you a thank you note and send the winners their trophies. I would so much appreciate that. Thank you so much to Michelle, our chief judge, and you did such an amazing job. Great, great job. And thank you, Crystal, for being our Zoom master. Well done. It was her very first time, so great job, Crystal. And I love the fact that all of us are learning the judges. Thank you so much. I can't reveal your names or faces, but <laughs> we appreciate all of you and timers. And I don't know if you're on the screen right now. Thank you so much. And ballot counters. I, I was one of them and Lisa was the other. Summer and Stephanie were our timers today. And then we had Jenny as our Sergeant at Arms. Yay. <laughs> Thank you also to Todd, our model speaker. He did such an amazing job. I really appreciate his speech and uh, our contestants as well. James and Jonathan, great job with all of your speeches. And I'm so happy that all of you were able to make it on the Zoom call today. Did I miss anyone? Uh, let's see. I have <clears throat> anyone? Let's see. I you think missed someone. Did I miss someone? You missed Debbie Berger, Division oh, <laughs> Director. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> didn't didn't uh, didn't have my name on the list. I guess. <laughs> so, what about our contestants continuing on, Miss Division Director? Oh, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> the next contest level will be the district contest, and that will be held on May 16th. I believe more information will be coming out on that later. It will be a Zoom contest. And then I do believe that, and, and Emily might be able to give us a little bit more information or maybe Michelle, but That's I believe easy. that the, uh, yeah, go ahead, Michelle, if you'd like. Yeah, I was just saying Emily's not here. Oh. and. Uh, so uh, the other thing that I think is very important, especially because online and all that, is uh, the second placer should also be on standby and as much as possible attend the contest because you would hate for your division not to have a representative, especially since both contestants were very good. And I'm sure James will make sure everything is turned off at home so that he will have good internet power and tie all his caps so nobody can get short circuit or anything. But it's always good for the second placer to be there as well. Back to you, Debbie. Thank you, Michelle. And I believe that the, is it the, district okay the uh, international sorry or regional one one of them was was going to be in france i believe and that is that is being canceled right now and they're looking they, at uh, what they are doing is they are moving paris to 2021 which just oh. moves the schedule back a year and so they will be doing a zoom contest for the international contest for the regionals, everything is going to be done by Zoom. They'll have more dates officially set here in the next few months, but they just announced that Paris is going to be moving forward. So that but as, be... as far as I know, the evaluation contest ends at the district level, though. Correct. We yes, won't sir. be going to international. 
Very good. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Is there anything else that I missed? <laughs> Lyle, thank you so much for being yes. our co-master today. You did an amazing job. Really appreciate all of you. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for getting a hold of me yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, um, I do want to, can you tell us more about the international speech for the Division C? We're doing that next week? Oh, yes, thank you. We are doing the International Speech Contest for Division C that will be on April 25th, and it is going to be by Zoom. It is 10, uh, 10 to noon, and we'll have the contest briefings at 9. I am still looking for contest volunteers. If all of you who are on this contest today would like to help out, please let me know. I can put you on the list for that for next time and I am still trying to get that all squared away so I do appreciate all of you and if you have the time and I'd love to have you again next week. All right if there's nothing further I am going to stop this recording and say thank you all so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend going into next week and we look forward to seeing everyone next Saturday morning at same time same place. Thank you everybody. Thank you Crystal. Thank you everyone. Thank you Crystal. Thank you guys.